Yeah, I'll try to make it quick. So California politicians uh, are blaming the industry, the oil and gas industry, or rather the oil and refining industry uh, uh, for high gasoline prices in the state of California. And they're alleging a conspiracy behind the price hike. So California uh, Governor Gavin Newsom uh, is demanding an investigation of the state's currently high gasoline prices, which is around $4 per gallon of regular gasoline compared to $2.5 per gallon in places like Alabama and Louisiana. And Newsom alleges an, quote unquote, inappropriate industry practices case here uh, for, quote unquote, unaccounted for price differentials. So he compares, you know, what is Cal uh, the average California paying and what is the average uh, Alabama citizen paying for gasoline? And then we have higher taxes and so on and certain infrastructure. And then there's a price differential that we can't explain. That's what a, what a study uh, found for the, for the price differences among states. But there's a, a couple of things that can explain that. So first of all, some refining capacity uh, recently in California has uh, experienced shutdowns from various problems, which of course can happen, but this time it's several refiners at once, which uh, of course uh, makes a supply bottleneck for the gasoline fuel. And there's also a trend of uh, declining uh, domestic oil production in the state of California which has chosen for political reasons to not opt into the shale gas, uh, shale gas and oil revolution. And uh, there's also, California is notorious for its red tape and, and uh, regulations in, in particular against fossil fuels. So they are making it difficult for, you know, oil developers or refiners or transporters and so on. And they are burying them in red tape and creating these costly regulations. And then they argue, okay, so where are our, you know, smaller competition producers? Why are they not entering the market? Why is there a price differential, right? So it makes no sense. You can't just uh, make it very expensive for smaller refiners or smaller retailers to enter the market or to, to operate in the market and then blame, you know, high, high price levels for gasoline on the industry. There's no conspiracy. It's just... It's policy. It's decades-long policy by Californians, but of course the politicians need some scapegoat. So, you know, I'm personally surprised that the prices in California are as low as they are. You know, if I would invest in California's fossil fuel industry, I would demand a, a really big additional margin on my on my profit or profit margin because of the high risk. Because I don't know whether Governor Newsom and and some of the the state assembly or the state senate will be uh you know destroying my capital at five years down the road yeah we could we should do a little bit more research into some of the specifics just because i think that there's a there's a real opportunity to connect with american drivers and particularly california drivers and talk to them about how much they're getting screwed by these policies and they're being asked to make these sacrifices that accomplish nothing except increasing the the status uh, of of other people. So, yeah, the, the, the and I get asked this sometimes by dry, I, I ride a lot of Uber and uh, I get asked this by different Uber drivers. Now, according to Elon Musk, and I really hope he's right, you know, next year he's going to have a fleet of robo taxis. That's all. That would be an interesting power hour discussion topic. Is just to talk about that because he's. I'm. I'm gonna ramble about this for a second. I'm super interested. I've become probably too interested in the Tesla investor story, uh, and I got interested in this about a year ago because Musk is is such a fascinating hybrid, no pun intended, uh, of different qualities. And you know, one thing is he's just clearly has this engineering brilliance, and he's got a really I like a lot of his his methods of thinking, but then he's totally got this whole philosophy of sustainability, and in particular, we should be using solar, and he doesn't in any way meaningful support nuclear, and his he has this dogma that okay, well, we need to use 
batteries for everything. And so what what's been interesting is that when I've just been following the debate over what's going to happen with the company, the thing that I'm I should have said this publicly before. I might have written it down privately, but you know, my my concern about it was going to be that that people are people are a lot of people are buying Tesla for different kinds Teslas for different kinds of status reasons. What happens when that cachet diminishes? It'll diminish for some reason, and then of course there was the upper, the chance of the tax credit expiring. But just in general. People buy cars. They have a lot of status reason, reasons involved. One thing that was interesting about the case for Tesla was that people were acting like, oh, Tesla is just by far the best car based on the merits. And like, even if it is the absolute best car, like if the Model S is the absolute best car uh, for people who have a certain amount of money, which I don't even think that's, that's true in many cases, but uh, it's definitely not the best car for most people. And so what, what, it's interesting that there's a sort of Kool-Aid drinking where people are acting like, oh, well, objectively, of course, Tesla is the best car. And part of being the best car is, is having a battery in you. And no, for actually, for most people, it's not the best car at all. And even a lot of people bought it and it wasn't actually the best car for them. They spent a lot more money than they'd intended, maybe. But there was a certain coolness buying a Tesla. But now, you know, you watch the Avengers movie and you see an e-tron or if you have that kind of electric prestige, you see that or maybe even that prestige is lost. And then you're dealing with the fact that these battery cars are still much more expensive than uh, than gasoline cars. So to just be, it's been interesting in the last quarter to see, oh, Tesla's demand, you know, demand fell off. There was this idea, well, demand would increase exponentially. And so it, it seems like there's been in part this, this collapse of demand partially, maybe because the status has somewhat worn off. Uh, that's probably a lot of it because they've, they've been decreasing the price is quite a bit, which of course kills uh, their margins. But at the same time, what's exciting about Tesla is so the battery stuff doesn't excite me very much. Although that that could be cool if it gets to the right price. But what's really exciting is automation because I, I, listeners might know I don't even drive anymore. I just ride Uber. And if you could have automation, that would ultimately mean safer vehicles, and it would certainly be much much cheaper if you didn't have to pay a human. Uh, to drive it. Plus, they'd be totally quiet and no chit chat or anything like that. So I could really get a lot of work done. So the the fact that Musk is talking about robo taxis next year, and he claims to have this huge advantage in AI, he has this tendency toward overstatement. But at the same time, he's got a lot of engineering knowledge. So I really hope that he's right there. And then, you know, if he can do that, and then that and they should really hire us to help them with the regulatory stuff and the messaging around that, that would be really fun to help them uh, do something really good, not this kind of sustainable uh, mumbo jumbo, but the actual the actual benefit of liberating human beings from uh, any driving they don't want to do, and then liberating all kinds of productive and enjoyment uh, abilities. So, if anyone has any fascinating insights about well, to what extent the robo taxi thing can happen soon. Let us know.